What do the Cleveland Guardians, myself, and everyone watching the show have in common? It's the number of runs we scored in Major League Baseball tonight. We'll talk about the game, amongst other things, including college baseball and some more Bieber talk on today's Locked On Guardians. You are Locked On Guardians, your daily podcast on the Cleveland Guardians, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. The championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. So for the parts that fit, head to eBay Motors. Look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Uh, I want to thank all of you for joining in on the show today. Listen, when we have these bad runs, which two losses in a row is a bad run, uh, the the uh, the the downloads are down. Let's just be honest about it. So I appreciate everyone who's shown up joining in through thick and thin. On uh, listen, it's approaching middle. Ju- it is middle of June. By the time you watch this, uh, this team is going to be multiple games under five hundred. Still, they're just not a good team. I- I've said it before, and I'll say it again. They are just not a good team. Uh, when you're four games, soon to be five games under five hundred. I believe uh, this is not updated in June, that's, that's not where you need to be. And, you know, I can sit there and I preach patience. I, I talked about what was going on with like comparing it to an NFL season. I, listen, you, you're getting very close to a midway point. And I think fan graphs heading into yesterday had this as a below 500 team for the year using advanced predictions at like 80 and 82. Now the twins were at like 83 to make the playoffs. So they're, they're still not out of it. You still have that. But yeah, this was a dispiriting game, but we're going to come back to that. Let's let's talk about some other stuff. I had someone in the comments. I always read them. I always respond to them. Uh, ask if I could give some talk about college baseball, college world series, who's left and players to know. So let's push back the game. I know some people will be annoyed that we push it back, but I feel like I need some time after watching this game. And it's 1146 my time, 1246 your time. Uh, if you are in Ohio and it's just, yeah, you know what it's like. You went through it. So let's just quickly uh, go through this. So in the games that we have left, the teams we have left, uh, there are eight. The final eight is a war. Oral Roberts. They have some guys, but there's no one who's really a top five round prospect. So we'll we'll kind of breeze over them and say, hey, Oral Roberts, um, you know, their biggest name on that team is, is probably Kate Denton. I don't think I really could even name another guy there. Um, oh, um, nope, I can't think of the guy's name. I think there's another pitcher. It's it's the pitchers. Pay attention to the pitchers. Uh, but they are facing off against TCU. TCU has uh, Brandon Taylor, and, and that's about Braden Taylor, I should say. And uh, th- that's the guy to know. Uh, I think I saw somewhere that if he was selected to be the first hitter taken in the first round from TCU, that's kind of amazing because it's been a solid city program. Um, one of those not known for the best uh, treatment of arms in the past. So that was coaches ago. Uh, Taylor's just been inconsistent. Like he could be a guy, the guardians take, you know, a good contact approach, third baseman uses the whole field um, showed strong exit velocities this year at points, but just inconsistent throughout the year. It's a roller coaster with him. That's not the type of guy I necessarily want to draft. I don't think I'll have him in my top 20 when it's all said and done. I thought for sure he'd be in there, but I'm tempted to kind of put him in tier three because inconsistency scares me quite a bit. Uh, but he also could go in the top 15, and that wouldn't shock me in the slightest. So Taylor, that's pretty much the guy to know at TCU. Uh, using the NCAA you know, website here, game two is Virginia at Florida. So Virginia has Kyle Teal, the catcher. Um, I think he is probably going to go top seven in this draft. Uh, great on base skills. Um, you know, he's um, as a catcher, he's a bit raw. He's not even as developed as most college catchers. You're betting that he can develop there and that he has enough offense to carry him at the same time. Um, Virginia hitters. I believe Mark Reynolds is still the second highest war in the history of the program. 
Number three, uh, yeah, I think Brandon Geyer is no longer fifth uh, amongst total players. Like this Virginia program, guys and then hitters have not – they teach a very specific approach that doesn't always incorporate their lower halves well. And, you know, you can look at Mike Pappy from Cleveland. I am nervous about taking anyone from Virginia, specifically a hitter. Um, Andrew Abbott may change things. He is the pitcher for Cincinnati who's just looking fantastic, the lefty. Uh, but we said a lot of those things about Daniel Lynch, but Abbott's doing more than Lynch did. But Teal, yeah. I mean, go look at Paven Smith and uh, Adam Hazley, the last two uh, top 10 hitters for Virginia. And look specifically, compare Paven Smith's numbers and Kyle Teal's numbers. I'm going to say that. Just go and compare those two guys and then see how you, if you really want to feel comfortable with that. And then uh, Jack uh, Geloff related to Zach, who we've also went to Virginia, who's an Oakland you know, top 10 prospect. Some people like Jack quite a bit. I, I think he's more second round, late second into early third. Um, some power. He had a really awesome, I think, freshman year that really turned some heads and then just didn't quite build on as much as expected in terms of his power production. And then Florida's got Wyatt Langford, who one can make a case, should be you know a 1B to Dylan Cruz's 1A, uh, maybe a better athlete, but uh, he's just been wildly productive. But again, Florida caveats galore with that florida program um outside of jonathan india who's the productive hitter from florida i uh, you know it's it's it, and they've had a lot of high picks and but langford's got skills i he would die, he's going to be second on my board i i believe in him in spite of uh the concerns and you got the pitchers hurston waldrop and brandon sprout sprout is a 23 year old senior he's one of the older guys in this draft i think he's like a third rounder because age is a big deal in the draft uh, even being older, that affects things. And then Waldrip, I think it's just a case of Florida being not great at development and telling him he has to throw fastballs, and his fastball is clearly his worst pitch. He should be throwing those secondary offerings the majority of the time. Uh, I think getting him the heck out of there, getting him to another program, if he fell to Cleveland, I would be ecstatic uh, as, as a fan of what he does. He might have two of the best secondary offerings in this entire draft. Um, I think he is closer to Skeens than he is to, you know, or maybe you would say closer to, to Rhett Lauder or Chase Dollander than he is to like that next tier of arms that he's kind of getting put in. And Sprout throws really hard. He might be a reliever. And then you also have to mention Josh Rivera, another senior, Florida's senior heavy team. Uh, Rivera is good on base tools. I just think he's going to be a senior sign in round two. I think he's going to be a money saver for somebody as a chance to be utility type. Um, Wake Forest, Stanford. Stanford, Tommy Troy is the big guy. Played well in the Cape. Good contact. Some nice internal data on him. Uh, I like Tommy Troy quite a bit. I think he's a top 12, top 10 guy in this class. Uh, he's kind of the standout. Benny Montgomery is someone fun to check out for next year from that Stanford program, but it is mostly Tommy Troy right now. And then you know, Stanford's kind of infamous for having a pitcher throw 154 pitches in a game this week. So you know, just always fun to see what they're going to do. And then on the other side of it, uh, with Wake, Wake's got Rhett Lauder. They got Scott Sullivan, uh, Teddy McGraw. I'm just trying to think uh, who's the other. There's one more pitcher I'm blanking on. Uh, that's going to annoy me. Seth Keener. That's the other guy. Uh, those four pitchers are all probably going to go in the top three to four rounds. Brock Wilkin will be late first, early second. Uh, big power. I kind of like him more than Taylor because, listen, everyone hits well at Wake. It's a band box, but he has exit velocity data to pair with it and a little bit more consistency as the year went on. So Wilkin is the guy to check out there. Uh, running out of time, Tennessee. So Chase Dollander is the pitcher to watch. You know, at one point he was the 1B in this class. Maui Ahuna was a guy I thought could go in the top 20. Transferred to Kansas, hasn't had a great year. Probably more of a third to fourth rounder. And then Tennessee has Jared Dickey, who is technically a catcher first baseman. I don't think most people think he can stick a catcher. He's got some you know, more power than hit. And uh, for LSU, my goodness. Okay, Dylan Cruz, best prospect I've seen in a very long time as a high schooler or as a college player, just as anyone. He is a fantastic prospect. Paul Skeens is the top pitcher in this class. Uh, Grant Taylor is another interesting pitcher they have. Trey Morgan hit a ton at first base. Christian Little is an interesting right-hander. And then... Is it? I think Ty Floyd is the one who got hurt, but I could be wrong in that. 
Uh, they're just loaded to bear. This LSU, LSU team is absolutely loaded. They are fun of the four teams left. They are the one you definitely, I would recommend checking out that game. That LSU Tennessee game is the one to watch. If you can only catch one of these games are all on ESPN. Uh, we are going to be right back to now. Talk about the no good, very bad game. Uh, two losses in a row for the Cleveland Guardians. But first, a quick word from our fantastic sponsors. And that fantastic sponsor, uh, our personal favorites of mine, because I just I love how they make me feel. I love how they feel in general. This is good people, bird dogs. Uh, listen, they are extremely comfortable. They are stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and like giving you a sculpted look. Uh, they do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. Uh, they fit better than regular shorts because they're made of stiff, restricting cotton. Bird dogs fix that issue. That's how regular shorts are made uh, by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a slimmer look. They also use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day. Here's the thing. I love my bird dogs. It's saying best practices to just show yourself wearing them. I'm not currently wearing them. Next time we have this ad read, I will wear my bird dogs. I love them. I've shown my Tumblr many times on here, and that's what you get when you go to bird dog slash lockdown MLB for a free Yeti style Tumblr with your order. That's birddogs.com slash lockdown MLB for a free Yeti style Tumblr. You won't want to take off your bird dogs. We promise you. And I'll promise you, these are my favorite shorts already. They're great. If you want a comfortable short, go check out bird dogs. And I also want to remind you to check out tomorrow's game. If you're cruising for a hurting uh, on Sirius XM radio, just check, not check, just put Guardians into your search engine. Uh, so now let's talk about this game. Uh, Aaron Zavale, season high for strikeouts, but he couldn't command at all. Four walks, five hits, two home runs on those five hits. Uh, it was just ugly. And it's, I mean, he was hit hard. It, it wasn't just the home run. It's like, he gave up of those five hits, two were doubles, two were home runs, four extra base hits. I'm sorry. No, those, I got that wrong. No, that's, that's right. Two doubles, one to Cronenworth, one to Tatis, home run to Tatis, home run to Machado. I, four out of five of his hits were extra base hits. I have not seen that. Uh, and then he just got himself in trouble walking bases. Yeah. He was striking guys out, but he couldn't command anything. Uh, you know, Xavier Curry gives up a home run late in the game that, hard for me to get too upset it's like doesn't even matter at that point that was the Juan Soto home run uh Hench's got somebody on and then he gives up no it was Nelson Cruz was the home run to Curry Juan Soto's home run was the one um no there was no one on that was a solo shot because of the wild pitch that uh, allowed um Tatis to score so it's like the wild pitch didn't matter in the end because then he turns around and gives up a home run rough inning for Hench's Sandlin comes in, does a good job in one inning. Uh, and then actually Henches comes in because the way it is, Sandlin pitched one third of an inning, then two thirds of an inning. Henches comes in, closes out. Uh, they ran wild on Cleveland. They they had absolutely no fear. This is what I'd like to see Cleveland do more. Three stolen bases, whereas Cleveland only got caught stealing. Again, Gary Sanchez has a pretty good arm behind the plate. Uh, but, I mean, they only had five hits. They had two walks. Uh, Gabby Arias did come in and get a walk late in this one, uh, but he should have been playing in this one. Uh, maybe the thing that just everything about Ahmed this year was him getting thrown out at first, right? Where he goes too wide around the base. He has a great hit. It's great. This is, you know, they're Tampa or Tampa. San Diego has so little respect for the Guardians offense. They don't even bother to bring in their closer. They leave Tim Hill in. Uh, they're just like, hey, you're an undersized lefty. I believe Tim Hill is like a 5'10 lefty. Let me just make sure i'm not wrong on that no he's a 6'4 lefty so he's a big lefty uh, i think he came from kansas city hey mission hills which is probably different than mission viejo i don't know my california geography but i believe tim hill is the one they got from kansas city a few years ago but <laughs> they just go go do two innings it's fine we don't need to burn our closer today uh and they didn't cleveland was you know they, they would get guys on base and then not be able to do anything with it uh they would have miscues and mistakes again, like a med getting thrown out or, and I love the fact that again, I know Gabby has got to walk and that's fantastic against Tim Hill, but it makes no darn sense. <laughs> he does not play well against lefties. It doesn't make any sense. Like I, it, this is where it infuriates me. This is where 
I start to become this borderline anti Tito guy. And I think Tito's a great manager. And I think there's a lot of things he does well, but how does nobody sit back? And again, it's the same thing with like, like Andres, like why doesn't anyone tell Andres stop sliding to first? It's, it's bad for you health wise. And it's, it's less effective. Why is nobody pull aside Tito and be like, just cause he's a lefty or just cause he is a righty doesn't mean he's going to hit lefties. We saw this with Owen Miller a year ago. Owen Miller, quick side note. People ask me about Owen Miller. I dug into his profile. Okay, so he is striking out less. He's also walking less. He's putting the ball more in play. And that is why he's being effective because he's got a 380 bat pip. For those who don't know what bat pip is, it's batting average of balls in play. League average has been going down because offense is going down. But it used to be about 290. I think it's like 285 now. His is 380. So the reason that uh, he is at a 115 weighted runs created plus the reason that he is a plus offensive performer is luck. So uh, Owen Miller regression is coming. So don't, don't, uh, we still, we still, the return for that Owen Miller trade, I believe is never coming, but Owen Miller regression is coming. Uh, to go back into it though, it's like, why? Why do, do these things keep happening? Why do they not understand a reverse platoon split? Why can there be no adjustments? This team is five games under 500 in the middle of June. They're expected to contend for the playoffs. If you had told me the everyone else in this division would be struggling to be 500, I would have thought Cleveland would be up by 10 games. Instead, they're up by five. Where's the adjustment? Where is any change? It's not in the lineup. It's not in who's playing every day. It's not in the order. It's the exact same lineup outside of like today, straw hit seventh uh, instead of hitting ninth, which also made no sense because uh, he has reverse platoon splits too. Uh, but it's like, why is he hitting over Brennan? Right. That's your adjustment is, is messing with who's hitting seven, eight, and nine. Uh, the top of the lineup is unchanged, completely unchanged. Med Rosario is still one of the worst hitters in baseball while being the worst defensive shortstop in baseball. But he plays every day because when you can put a guy in who's the worst at something, you should definitely do that. Uh, box score bingo. So they should have scored two runs, but again, didn't have any timely hitting. So they had none. The other side with five walks and nine hits should have been 14 opportunities, so roughly five runs. Hey, that's what they got. It should have probably been more for them, actually, with all those extra base hits and the stolen bases. Typically, you expect them to overachieve more than they did. I mean, technically, it's more like they're expected to have four in that situation, but you're close to five. So, you 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 know, you're not surprised by five. But I, I think they should have probably actually put more on the board. That's a credit to the bullpen in this one. Uh, who reached base multiple times for Cleveland? Nobody. If I'm doing the three stars and I go back to a year ago, Sandlin and Enya, because at least they put zeros on the board. And then uh, there was no extra base hits. There was no anything. So I guess I give it to Gabby Arias because he reached base and is only at bat. That's, I mean, this was a pretty terrible game to watch. <laughs> All things considered, uh, it was not fun. Uh, it was maddening. It was frustrating. And the offense just kind of disappeared. And this was the... You know, we talked about how good the offense had been coming into uh, this series. And we talked about how this is a team that has 4-0-1 in their last five. I kept talking about that. Well, they're not going to be. You know, this is going to be a loss. Uh, San Diego has a chance tomorrow to get to 500 and get to 500 at home. Uh, Cleveland is just going to keep doing what they've done. They're going to make no adjustments. They're going to make no changes. They're going to keep rolling out of med because it's June. And last year he got hot in may and then got on fire in june and that hasn't happened but they're still going to roll him out there and just let him take up at bats we have a million and a half shortstops so we need to see if any of them are, are major league players or not um you know i was the biggest mile straw defender but when valera is healthy it's time to see what he can do and, and make straw your fourth outfielder uh i don't know what you need to do in terms of catching i don't know with all of my knowledge, I'll be the first to say, like, I don't know what's the nitty gritty of it, of calling a game, of knowing, you know, tendency data and all that stuff that the catchers need to know in Cleveland. But at this point in time, I mean, what's it going to hurt to roll Bone Naylor out there? Uh, this this team, again, it's the middle of June. They're five games under 500. I, I don't even really, do I need to look? It, you know, they're at least three back. Um, again, this is not updated standings, probably more than that it's a frustrating time to be a fan of this team because we have known they're not great. And yes, they called up two rookie pitchers. Um, they, they moved on from some guys who were not pitching, but 
no one's playing particularly grand. No one's particularly playing particularly great over the course of the whole year. And right now we're just stuck sitting in and looking at a not good team. And it's, I'm, I'm frustrated. I, I have no patience left dealing with, with uh, the frustration of fans who then sometimes take it out on me uh, as someone who, who hosts the show. Uh, it's just, I, I get the frustration. I feel it as well. I know people are going to be like, you're so negative. What's there to be positive about after a game like this? Uh, I mean, I can't even really pull three stars out of it. This was a game where it stunk from the beginning and in all part was not great. And they weren't really, well, yesterday's game was closer in the box score, but they also weren't really ever totally in that one. And now we're setting up uh, for tomorrow. We're hoping that Logan Allen can beat uh, Ryan Weathers and it's lefty on lefty. And that's perfect. I didn't think it was originally lined up to have Ryan Weathers pitching. Maybe they moved it around because they know Cleveland can't hit lefties. Um, and watch G- Gabby Arias be in the lineup for the first time in like three, four days because he's just, you know, let him go out. He has not. So Sunday, he played Sunday and Saturday. Um, he's not played since then, but because there's a lefty, he'll be in the lineup. That it may, doesn't make any sense, but that's how it's going to be. <sighs> Enough of my venting. We're going to take an, our break and come back and continue with uh, if this team continues to, to fail, let's look at the National League and what teams make sense or don't make sense for Shane Bieber. I remind everyone to go check out SiriusXM for tomorrow's game. It's an earlier game. It's a 640 start, so this doesn't have to be uh, such a late recording for me. Thank you. Uh, just type uh, Guardians in your SiriusXM uh, device, and you can check out the game. So going through the National League, let's just go through this quickly. We already talked about Washington Stinks. Um, I mean, they're the team that's terrible. Uh, Colorado is terrible. Cincinnati isn't going to trade the farm for a year and a half yet. Uh, should we just go alphabetically? Arizona. I think they're a team to discuss. We'll add them to the list with Los Angeles, Baltimore, and Texas. Atlanta. Here's the thing with Atlanta. They have tons of pitching. That's not what they need. They don't, they're a, one of the top teams in baseball, but they're running like six starters and with a spot starter, uh, you know, Charlie Morton, Bryce Elder, uh, AJ Smith Swarva was just called up. Spencer Strider has been awesome most of the year. Uh, they got Kobe Allard, Max Fried, Kyle Wright are on the disabled list on the 60 day for those. So there is some concern in terms of that, but you're hoping to get Freed and Wright back. And it just doesn't make any sense for Atlanta. So just moving on from Atlanta. Cubs, I think I made a mistake yesterday when I said that, listen, they're minor leagues. It's not snazzy at the top. Uh, it's solid value throughout. It's like a bunch of like 40 to 100 or 80 guys in the top 100. Uh, they just don't have kind of that stellar um, blue chip prospect. It's kind of a Cleveland system from many years ago, which makes sense because they got a Cleveland guy in charge there, but they're not a good team. They might even be looking to flip Marcus Stroman, uh, who might net more than uh, than Shane. Talked about Cincy and Colorado. Um, the Dodgers. Here's the thing with the Dodgers. They... You know, they got Kershaw. Bobby Miller's been awesome. Uh, Tony Gonsolin is there uh, pitching well. Michael Grove, not so much. Uh, Walker Bueller isn't going to pitch this year. Dustin May, I believe, is just made of duct tape and uh, toothpicks. That guy can't stay healthy. Uh, Ryan Pepio can't stay healthy. Julio Urias, uh, Noah Syndergaard, speaking of guys, can't stay healthy. 15-day disabled list there. Um, <laughs> they've got another, like, one, two, they got six guys from the bullpen on the 60 day. They've got like 10 guys on the 60 day disabled list. It's a little crazy. Uh, they called up Andrew Jackson. They got Gavin Stone. Uh, they they aren't super deep at, uh, at pitcher, but I still don't think they're a fit because their offense is just atrocious at parts. And I think that's what they're going to chase. You know, when your, your outfit is David Peralta, James Outman, um, that's not not great. You got Mookie Betts at the other spot, and that's fantastic. But Outman hasn't played as well this year, and Peralta is playing better of late. But you know, they, they definitely Miguel Rojas at shortstop, not not good. Um, they got some parts. I think if anything, they chase offense uh, for them. Eventually, bullpen. Uh, we talked about the fact that they had six guys in their bullpen on the disabled list. That is a beat up bullpen that is struggling for them. So. 
maybe there. Uh, Miami, listen, Miami doesn't need pitching. If you don't follow baseball, if you barely follow baseball, you probably know Miami's pitching staff is maybe the best in the league right now. It, it's ridiculous. It's really flipping good. Um, yeah, they, they've got pitching for days. Moving on. They need bats. Milwaukee. Milwaukee is not going to trade an asset. I mean, this is a team that a year ago traded Josh Hader because he was near free agency. They're not going to trade assets for a year and a half rental. They already have enough of a problem. Corbin Burns has been fantastic. I don't know what they do with him right now as they have to figure out if they are. I mean, they're a 500 team. They, they could decide to trade Corbin Burns. I, Brandon Winters on the 60 day disabled list. They are already in kind of a mess of a situation. They're not trading pieces. Uh, specifically not trading for a year and a half rental when they already have like, th- and Willie Adames is in that same situation. They have so many of those guys. They don't want more. The Mets. Yes. We'll come back to the Mets. Uh, Philadelphia. They, they've got a solid top four. Uh, Tejan Walker. I kind of made fun of that signing, but he's been good. Aaron Nola has been a bit of a disappointment compared to where he's been in the past. Zach Wheeler has been strong. Uh, Ragnar Suarez has been good maybe not great but he's been a solid guy for them their fifth spot they've kind of haven't had to use it a lot so they've had a lot of guys kind of bounce in for a bit uh bailey falter i believe has been their main guy but are they they're not gonna trade for shane bieber to be their fifth and then the miners aren't great and this is a team right now you know cody clemens is playing at first base that hasn't been great alec Baum hasn't worked out at third base they've had some issues um, themselves they're trying to figure out and the offense might be more what they look at especially when you look like griff mcgarry micabell uh painter painter can get healthy those are guys who aren't far from helping contribute to that team pittsburgh is interesting but again even though they're first in their division i don't necessarily know they're going to go out and pay yet for a pitcher. Now, if you went and got Bieber, he's definitely their number two because Mitch Keller has been amazing all year. There is a world where it's logical. I just also don't know if Cleveland moves Bieber, they're going to want help now. And Pittsburgh doesn't, I mean, this is a team with Josh Palacios, um, who I believe is, is Richie's brother and Mark Matthias is their bench. They don't have like a, a extra hitter. And unless you can, can convince them about a Henry Davis or an Andy Rodriguez and you're doing a trade where then you're not getting that guy to play this year. Um, and I don't think you can get either of those guys right now for Shane Bieber. That's, that's a problem. So you go down the list. It's like, I don't necessarily see a great fit for that trade. San Diego, you just kind of, you know, never want to say never. I think they're going to chase catching and bats, though. Um, Darvish has been great. Snell's been great. Musgrove's been great. Walker's or Salter Knight's been great. Ryan Weathers is the weakest guy in that rotation. And they're not going to, I think they'll chase other things. So these two teams do have a big history. Uh, San Francisco, you know, uh, Logan Webb has, has been good this year. Alex Cobb's been solid. Anthony Discalfini has been good enough, but they've had such injuries. Um, guys like Ross Stripling, Alex Wood, uh, missing time. They don't have great depth in their minors. Um, Tristan Beck, Sean Jelly, uh, Kyle Harrison, I assume we'll see at some point this year. But I don't see... So here's the problem with the, this Giants team. They have a lot of injuries. Luis Matos is going to get called up. Uh, Kyle Harrison's going to be someone who's going to jump in and help them soon, I believe. <laughs> it, they just don't have the prospect depth, nor do they have the hitter depth to really get a deal done. I just don't see a natural pathway to a, a deal. So St. Louis, I they're 15 games under 500. Do you really think they're going to trade for Shane Bieber right now? That's the answer when they're 15, 15. I mean, there, there's a world where it makes sense. Um, you know, Miles Miklos, Jordan Montgomery, Jack Flattery, those guys have been actually not as bad as you think. Uh, Adam Wainwright is definitely feeling the effects of time. Matthew Libertor hasn't stepped up. They have the depth to get that done. I mean, you can look right now where you know, Dylan Carlson has played much better of late. Jordan Walker has been fantastic on his second call up. Uh, you're not getting any of those guys, but the depth there, Tommy Edmonds filling in at center with Lars Newt 
Newt Bar out hurt. Uh, Alec Burleson, uh, Luke and Baker, those are some prospects who at least have been in the big leagues that would make some sense to try to talk about. I, you know, it, maybe you see if Ivan Herrera give you some catcher depth in a system that doesn't have any can dig deep. Juan Yepes, you know, is another hitter that's maybe not a prospect, but you could try to figure out if that's a guy who helps you. I just don't see them making a trade with their, you know, 15 games under 500 for as much as Cleveland has been um, miserable this year. This isn't to say that this team can't come back and figure it out. This division is as bad. The centrals are terrible, but just hard to see a pathway. So the teams I really see, and we'll get into this on Friday's show, what makes sense for the Angels, for the Orioles, for Texas, Arizona, and the Mets? Because those, I think, are the teams that we're looking at. Uh, sorry for the general negativity. It was a negative night when you stay up late, and that is what you see. Uh, I hope it was a worthwhile experience, though, for all of you watching at home. Thank you. And remember to rate and review, download daily, do your part. It helps. Comment, like, subscribe. All those things help with the algorithm on YouTube. Downloading daily is what goes to our bosses and lets us say, hey, we have our downloads are good, as well as watching and all that great stuff. So thank you for being part of the Lockdown Guardians team. I uh, want to say a thank you to my every day, to my every day or to every day or Thomas Willie, who's I'm pretty sure my buddy from high school. Um, who, uh, you know, is a longtime friend of mine. Uh, you know, it, it's it's kind of fun to see, uh, you know, my my other buddy from high school, Andrew Clayman, used to write it waiting for next year. He'll send me messages about it. So uh, shout out to him. I think he might be an everydayer as well. Uh, but thank you to everyone out there. And, you know, a, as we end every show, there's a certain way. Go, go, Guardians, go.